Hi, I'm Lillian, welcome back to my channel Ink and Pages. This video is very heavily inspired by people like Becca and the Books, who do a video at the beginning of each calendar year to just show all of the books they own that they have not read. That is exactly what I'm gonna be doing here. The purpose of this video, I guess, is to act as kind of like a time capsule for me, mostly, um, so that I can look back and say, oh, that's how many books I owned at the beginning of 2022 that I hadn't read yet, and then, hopefully compare it to a more favorable number at the end of the year. I can already tell you that I've counted them all up and I actually own two more books that I have not read than I did this time last year. But all of these books are unread as of, you know, midnight on New Year's Eve slash New Year's Day 2022. Um, there are a couple that I have started reading and then have either put on hold or just haven't finished yet, but as of filming, they are unfinished. So I'm gonna include them in this list. I have divided up all of my unread books into like different categories and I'm gonna try and list them in order of have owned the longest to my most recent purchases. So I'll start off with the two eBooks that I own that I haven't read, which are My Lovely Wife by Samantha Downing and The Secrets of Wishtide by Kate Saunders. Next we have my language related books. So we have Through the Language Glass by Guy Deutscher, Alice in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. This is actually like a dual one. So it has, oh, my bookmark. It has English on one side and German on the other. Is That a Fish in Your Ear by David Bellos and Babel by Gaston Doran. Next we have all of my mythology and folklore books, starting with The Mammoth Book of Celtic Myths and Legends by Peter Beresford Ellis, The Penguin Book of Norse Myths by Kevin Crossley Holland, The Mabinogion, translated by Lady Charlotte Guest, English Fairy Tales by Joseph Jacobs, Scottish Fairy Tales by Philip Wilson, The Greek Myths Folio Edition by Robert Graves, The Egyptian Myths by Gary J. Shaw, The Light Princess by George MacDonald, The Aeneid by Virgil, and Storyland by Amy Jeffs. Next is just general non-fiction and we've got Eat Sweat Play by Anna Kessel, The Writer's Tale, The Final Chapter by Russell T Davies and Benjamin Cook, Literary Starbucks by Jill Poscanser, Wilson Josephson and Nora Katz, The Phantom Atlas by Edward Brooke Hitching, Cicely Mary Barker and Her Art by Jane Lang, Disfigured on Fairy Tales, Disability and Making Space by Amanda Ledeek, The Outrun by Amy Liptrot, Joyful by Ingrid Fettel Lee, Wintering by Catherine May, and Useless Magic by Florence Welch. So next we move on to the good stuff, the stuff you came here for, which is all of my fiction books, starting with The Restaurant at the End of the Universe, Life, the Universe and Everything, So Long and Thanks for All the Fish, and Mostly Harmless, all by Douglas Adams, A Conjuring of Light by V. Schwab, Arcadia by Ian Pears, Waking Gods by Sylvain Nouvelle, Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman, Our Dark Duet by V.E. Schwab, Dark Matter by Blake Crouch, The Thrilling Adventures of Lovelace and Babbage by Sidney Padua, The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss, The Meaning of Flowers, and The Secret Word of the Flower Fairies by Cicely Mary Barker, A Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes, Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J Maas, Monstrous Volume 5 by Marjorie Liu and Sana Takeda, The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden, Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo, Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Bully, Trouble the Saints by Alea Dawn Johnson, Broken Stars edited by Ken Liu, Reputation by Lex Croucher, One by One by Ruth Ware, Monstrous Volume 6 by Marjorie Liu and Sana Takeda, and finally When the Tiger Came Down the Mountain by Nevo. So that's all of them. There are 52 in total, which is actually two more than I had this time last year. But actually last year, I don't think I was counting um, eBooks. I think I had more than two eBooks this time last year. So technically, this number has improved if we're using the same criteria to count. But having said that, obviously, yes, I would like to decrease this number. Everyone always says that. Um, it's not actually one of my like reading bookish goals this year to reduce um, my TBR in any way, it's just kind of like something I'm I'm always hoping to do. And I know that 52 books actually isn't a lot compared to other people who've done this video um, who might have like 300 or 400 or 500 unread books on their shelf, which is like more than all of the books I own in total. I think I have maybe like 300 books in total, counting absolutely everything. But also having said that, everyone's shelves are unique and everyone's shelves are only their own business. So this little time capsule video is now complete. Um, I hope it was interesting for you. I know that I love snooping in other people's shelves and I love watching videos like this where you see all the books people own and haven't read. So if you're also nosy like me, I hope you found it interesting. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.